Today we're checking out the Dark Knight chassis kit for the FMS FCX24 from Next Speed. The FCX24 Power Wagon is going to take the next step in its evolution and it's going to get this new chassis kit. We've done some pretty wild builds from Next Speed. They have a really radical style and this one looks to be no different, although it does look to be a little more tame than the previous versions that we've built. This is a carbon fiber, aluminum, and composite chassis. It's going to give us loads of customization as far as linkage and suspension goes. And of course, the uniqueness and that cool styling that NextSpeed always delivers. So let's open this up. We're going to take a look at the kit. Then we're going to install it on the build. And then we're going to run it and see how it does. So let's get into it. So the power wagon, this is currently running the NextSpeed frame rails on it. So it's got these aluminum frame rails in their LCG kit that maintains the stock body and everything, which I really like this setup. I'm reluctant to mess with it, but I'm going to give this a go and see how it looks can always switch it back if we want but here's our base you know we've got the extended links from RC all-wheel drive we've got the full fury tech system in here RC all-wheel drive wheels we've got the Endura tires with the flub RC inserts so this thing means business and I'm anxious to see what types of gains we get for performance by going to this new chassis kit so let's open this up and check it out We went with an all black version this time. You know, I usually do some pretty radical color schemes when I do these next speed chassis, but the power wagon already has a lot of flash on it with the red linkage and the red and black wheels. So I opted to go with the pure black chassis kit. Here's our instructions and a bunch of parts and pieces here. This looks to be a much more complex kit than other next speed conversions that we've done. There's a lot of components here. One thing I'm noticing right off the bat, of course their frame rails are always of great quality. They've got these very nice anodized aluminum frame rails, the raw beveled edges here that give it a great look. But what I'm noticing that I really like is that the composite parts on this chassis kit are very nice quality. That was one of my complaints about previous chassis kits from next speed was that you had these beautiful aluminum precision parts but then you had kind of these rough 3d printed components that went on it these look very very clean yeah much better so right off the bat i'm very pleased with the fit and finish of this this is a big step up from previous chassis kits that we've gotten from next speed all right why don't we get into this i'm going to bring you guys around my shoulder we're going to do this together we're going to assemble this thing and put it on the build. So, when we get after it. I think we're in a good starting place here. I unpackaged everything. I got all my parts over here to my right. My hardware up here. Got my frame rails laid out ready to go. So, we're going to start building this thing out. To identify the rear, we've got these long flat pieces on the chassis or in the rear. The thing that I noticed with this hardware and this kit is that everything is 1.5 millimeter hex head screws, which is awesome. So happy not to do Phillips head screws like we've had to do in previous kits. So this thing is just getting better and better by the minute. All right, I'm going to start from the rear and work my way forward. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this rear frame cover on. This notched out piece goes towards the front. Next, we're going to put a cross brace right here. There's a couple different cross braces here that come with the kit. The one that you want in the rear is the one that has the screws already started in it. There's our brace. So that goes in this hole right here, kind of right in the elbow of this chassis rail here. Now I'm going to work my way towards the front. I'm going to install the servo holder, which is going to go on the bottom here. And that's this component right here. The notched out portion goes in the back. As you can see, it has nuts recessed inside this underneath. Those are going to go on the bottom. Okay, there's our servo mount here. It goes into this, it's kind of a peninsula right here in the front. Fits perfectly right in there. So next up, we're going to do our battery holder, our front battery holder. And then we're going to do the front frame cover. So the battery holder in the ESC 
holder are very similar looking. So the battery holder is going to be the smaller of the two. This tray is going to come later in the steps. So for this one, we want the battery holder, which is a smaller one, and it has the two triangular designs on the top and bottom here, as opposed to the one on the rear tray. So this is going to be our battery tray going in the front. The imprinted designs are going to go towards the front as well. Interesting angle that the battery tray sits at. Next up, frame cover. With this one with the kind of toothy look going towards the front here. It's going to sit just like that. All right, starting to take shape. Here's our frame cover. It's looking good. So next step, it says now, is to put the motor and transmission in. And we're going to bolt in the new skid as well. So that means i got to strip the old one out. I wonder if that skid is the same. It looks like it is. I wonder if I can just take my whole skid. And that might make life way easier. I think I'm going to try to do that. So that means I'm just going to drop the skid out. And then hopefully just slot the new one on top. Let's give that a shot. There we go. So there's the old one off just like that. So in theory, you should be able to drop it onto the new one. Next step is to start assembling some chassis rails. So these are going to go on our sides here with the diagonal points going down into the front. And you can see there's kind of this protruded edge on the back that goes towards the inside of the chassis. You want this nice flat outer edge with the recessed holes here on the outside. It's like I jumped the gun here. I'm supposed to put this goes on the skid or down by the skid. So. Okay, now we're getting into our carbon fiber trim pieces here. So with these, you have your short, sharp end that goes towards the back. You know, they misread the instructions on here the battery I'm gonna use that same bolt try to get that out of there somehow so in the back here you want to put some of these supplied nuts on there so we're gonna use these silver nuts on the back of the screws because the chassis rails are not threaded so I'm gonna make sure we get those on there Only a couple pieces left. What we're going to do now, we're going to put our electronics tray in the back. So this is actually going to sit right on top of the motor here, just like this. Boy, the fit and finish on this is nice. It goes together really, really clean. All right, got my TU24. It's going to sit perfectly right on that tray right there. Here's our roof. The concave section goes in the front. Boy, look at that thing. Man, black was the right choice. Last thing we gotta do is just put our linkage and our shocks on here. This is gonna be to your specs. Since the rails are not threaded, you're gonna utilize these supplied nuts on your hardware. So what I'm gonna do now is just attach my linkage and my shocks, get it all buttoned up, and then we'll be ready to rock and roll. My goodness, take a look at this thing. Gotta say, this is by far my favorite chassis kit from NextSpeed, and I'm really, really pleased with how it looks, much, much more so than I was expecting. I really thought I was gonna be putting this on for the video and then taking it off and going back to the Power Wagon body, but boy, does this thing look cool. I've said this numerous times during this video, but I will continue to say it. I'm just so pleased with the quality of the additional components on this thing. It really has a premium feel to the chassis. The whole thing came together so, so well. What I did end up doing was putting some springs in the back just to lift the chassis up a little bit. It was sitting so bottomed out. As you can see, that thing was like half an inch off the ground, but now we got some decent ground clearance here. Still thinking that breakover is going to be an issue just given the long wheelbase and the belly dragger stance here, but we'll give it a shot. We got the Fury Tech TU24 up on my tray. We got the Mini Komodo in here. 
shocks are positioned in a good spot i feel it's got such a cool stance to it great look to this chassis one thing i'm thinking about i'm not sure how i'm gonna get the battery in here I'm trying to slide it in from the top it's not really going to work i think what i might have to do is open up the roof slide it in on the interior and use the velcro strap to hold it in there but we'll see so i think what we should do why don't we Put the battery in here get this thing situated we'll put it on the performance table we'll do some performance measurements on the table and then we'll hit the course with it and then we'll go hit the rocks so let's do that now all right guys here we are on the setup table what i was able to do is get the battery in there if you can see that i had to take the whole roof off slide the battery in use the velcro strap to keep it in there and then put the roof back on Kind of a pain in the butt, but if you're committed to running this for a full pack, not a big deal. It's just four screws to get it in and out. So we're going to run this, test it with the battery in it to get an accurate measurement here. Start with the side hill. Forty-five. Fifty. Fifty-five. 60 degrees on the side hill. Let's try the vertical. This thing is so long. If I can get it to stay on the table. 45. 55. I lost it on the back. That's a bummer. We max out the ability for it to stay on the wheel chocks at about 65 degrees. I feel like it could go way more than that. Here we are on the corner scales. So we've got 56% front, 44% rear, total weight of about 636 grams. Not bad weight distribution. So now let's go see how this thing performs. Here is the Dark Knight FCX24 on the course. Let's get it. This is running the Fury Tech Micro Komodo in here. There's, right off the bat, there's that ground clearance issue. Be real careful with my line choice. There we go. Oh. I love the red, this thing would look so rad, all black. Oh gosh, that break over is so much worse than I thought. Definitely got to do something to address that ground clearance. That's going to be problematic. Unless you're just doing straight up hill climbs, that's not going to be great. But it is a beast on the verticals for sure. Getting up over this log is going to be ugly, I think. We'll hand of God there to keep going. Get into mini Moab here. Sticking like glue up over the gatekeeper there. So the victim of understeer like everyone is there lately. We 
made it. Took a little creative approach there. Let's see the side hill in practice. Look at that thing sticks like a spider right there. Very composed, no issues on the side hill. I'm expecting with the long wheelbase that it will dominate Hell's Gate here. Absolutely does. I don't even think I let off the throttle barely at all there. This is a cool truck, I gotta say. I like it. Does have its shortcomings with that long wheelbase and that low stance. It's gonna take some getting used to, but boy, is it cool looking. Very capable. I'm excited to take this thing out on the rocks to see what it can do. Let's do one more line and then we'll go hit the rocks. Oh, super steep approach there. All right, lots of fun in here. Let's go outside. Out here in crawler heaven with the dark night FCX 24. Let's give it a shot out here. This is a pretty challenging spot for the minis. It's mainly made for the tent scales, but let's give it a shot anyway. I wasn't making up that even regardless with the long wheelbase, just too much or lack thereof a break over. So, hand of God action there. Having to help this thing out a lot here. Let's so find a more tame section. Ah, it's just too long. Dude, look at this new section the guys built here. The track wizards have been edited again. A bunch of dirt bikes out here today. You probably hear that in the background. Gosh, I'm just so hamstrung by that long wheelbase in the low chassis.
that's a bummer. I don't know if you guys can see that. Broke my drive shaft right there. I don't think I have a spare. This might be the end of my outdoor test, which is a bummer because I was just getting into this awesome new section here. I'm going to see if I have another one, but this might be the end of the test. But even though our time on the rocks was short-lived, still had a lot of fun with this thing. I've said it a number of times during this video, but I do really believe this is my favorite of the next speed chassis that they've made to date. I think they made some really good choices with this kit. Number one, they toned the styling down a little bit. I'm all about loud and outrageous builds, but some of the chassis kits that they've put out are a bit too sci-fi for a lot of crawler enthusiasts. This one has that cool radical space age style, but it's subtle enough that I think it's going to appeal to a broader audience. The quality of the composite and the printing on these new parts make a big difference in the overall fit and finish and the feel of this chassis kit. The functionality of this kit is there too. It does a good job relocating the battery up front and putting it at an angle, although that angle is a little tricky to get your battery in and out of. So overall, a very cool kit, affordably priced. I'll put the link in the description down below if you wanna pick one of these up yourself. As much as I love this chassis kit, I am torn whether I want to go back to the power wagon or not. You guys got to let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of the Dark Knight chassis kit? And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so, and I'll see you in the next video.